Hi, I'm Stu, and today I'm going to show you a natural camera shake or camera movement technique that you can create with static images in post-production. So I've got a clip on the timeline here. I'm just going to highlight the clip, make sure I'm right at the beginning of the clip. And then before we add any keyframes, I want to increase the size of the clip to around about 125. And then from there, we're going to add our first keyframe. Now, this is a 10 second clip. Generally speaking, when it comes to naturalistic camera movement, you kind of want to space it out to approximately one movement every two seconds or so. But in real life, we don't move the camera every two seconds. But in this scenario, we want to have roughly an average of two seconds worth of movement. So five movements within a 10 second clip, but just not necessarily all evenly spaced. Now, if we consider the shot that we've got here, and we'll play it through, you've got an L train moving through the frame and about to disappear around the corner. And I've got the clip ending just as the last carriage comes into view and then the train will continue onwards. So what you want to do is you want to think about the movement you're going to create as if you're there with your camera or your iPhone or you want to try and create movement that follows how you would be framing up the shot if that makes sense. So I'm just going to play it through and start at around about just over a second. So my first movement would be to get more of the training shot. So I like to, when it comes to doing this on the laptop, is use the actual X and Y sliders. But you can, of course, just tap and drag the actual video clip itself. That's looking good. We'll just leave that where it is. And then just move on a little bit more and think to yourself, well, I'm thinking rule of thirds. So let's move things over to this corner. So that's us now we've got one, or one, two, and then we go to here. The train's starting to disappear. So I would maybe think about just coming down a little bit and then continue onwards and then maybe back up a little bit just so I can get the edge of that last carriage, the back door of it in frame. And then I'm just going to here and I'm thinking to myself, I want to just crop out that building on the left and balance things up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes, but you're actually only considering the spaces. So one space, two space, three space, four space, five space. And then that is just continuing on to the end. The other thing you want to consider is we don't just move in an X and Y sort of scenario. We also will angle the camera or give it a bit of a Dutch lean. In this instance, I'm going to try my best to frame up the shot. And then when I move to the next keyframe, I think mm, needs to go the other way. And we're trying to sort of balance it up to this building here. And then I'm just going to move that down ever so slightly just so there's no black edges. And then we go to here and again, just ever so slight movements. And then the last two were a bit more confident, so we don't need to do anything here. And the image is pretty straight. So let's just play it through. So you see that kind of jerkiness that's going on there? How we sort that out is we can either space out the keyframes a little bit more and just move them in place. So still not making it completely even Stevens, but the best way to sort that out is to tap on this little button up here at the top and that gives us our ease controls. And what I want to do is just move the playhead along so halfway in between the keyframes and set it to slow in and slow out. And then go to the next keyframe and again slow in, slow out. See how it smooths things along? Then go to the next keyframe and just right the way along everything. We're going to do slow in and slow out, and that should help smooth out any kind of bumps in the framing. When you get to the last one, it's literally going to be a constant in and a slow out. And then if we play it through, see how it's a bit smoother? And you don't even consider the fact that there's sort of camera movement or anything like that. So there we go. There's our more naturalistic framing. And then if you like what you've done and you want to keep it, you can go back in and set the whole thing up as a preset and just call it natural camera shake. So there we go.
Natural Camera Shake. Hope you found this little tutorial today useful. And I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.